I want you to turn your Bibles to the Gospel of Luke. It's in the New Testament. If you only brought your New Testament, this is a good day for you. It's a good day. Luke chapter 19, and I'll read just a few verses. We'll begin at verse 41 and go down to verse 44, and then I want to tell you a story. Luke chapter 19, verses 41 to 44. If you were lo looking for it and you have it, say yes. That's good enough for me to start. Here it is. Now as Jesus drew near, he saw the city. Of course, it's referring to Jerusalem. And wept over it, saying, If you had known, even you, especially in this your day, the things that make for your peace. And then, probably in, in different versions of the Bible, you'll see a dash, or it's like a dot, dot, dot. It's an incomplete sentence. It, the things that make for your peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. For days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment around you, surround you, and close you in on every side, and level you, and your children within you to the ground. And they will not leave in you one stone upon another because you did not know the time of your visitation. So there's this guy who's driving on a mountain road. He's got a Camaro muscle car that he bought in Oshawa, Ontario. And he's got the pipes and, uh, on there, and you can hear the roar, and his windows are down, the sun is shining, and he's going up the mountain road, it's a highway, but just one lane for him and one lane for the other side, and he's on a straightaway, and he's opening it up, and there's a curve up ahead, and he, he comes just closer, closer, and around the curve comes this convertible sports car. And it weaves around, and a, uh, this isn't, you know, significant, but it's a lady driving. And she goes from her lane into his lane, and the guy's scared out of his mind, and she shifts over to her lane, and just as she's going by, she goes, pig! And he's so quick, his window's open, he goes, you too, lady! And he drives around a corner and slams into a herd of pigs on the road. If you only knew what was around the corner or up ahead. That's what I want to talk about. Is what's around the corner? What's up ahead? you probably wouldn't yell so much stuff out of your window. So here's the story. Jesus is speaking here, and he, he's coming closer to Jerusalem. And as he gets closer and closer, the, the actual verbiage here is he breaks out bawling. He doesn't, doesn't drop a tear, but he actually ends uh, up crying and, and, and really crying out loud. He draws near the city and he weeps over it. And he says this, if you had known, and you might want to go to verse 44, because you did not know. Isn't it a terrible thing to not be prepared for what's ahead or what's around the corner? And we, we just think, you know, every day is the same. But in actual fact, there was something around the corner that this fella needed to know about. And what Jesus is saying here, if you had known, if you had only known, because you do not know, because you did not know, you're going to miss something. It's amazing how important it is to know. What's up ahead for your life? What's up ahead for embassy? What's around the corner? What's up ahead for what God wants to do in our city, in our region? What's up ahead for people here who say, listen, it's first time in church. You know, I, I'm not saying I'm living for God, but I'm, I'm, I'm here in church. What's up ahead for you? Jesus is entertaining this question about a city. And he said, because you don't know, 
And, you know, the inference is you should know some things about what are up ahead. This isn't some kind of a mystical thing where God, you know, just uh, says, I'm not going to show you anything. No, he says, you should have known this. You should have known this. In fact, the language here in verse 42, if you had known, even you, meaning Jerusalem more than any other city that exists on the face of the earth, you should have known what God has for you. You should have known that there's something around the corner for you. There's something special for you. There's something just up ahead for you. This is what the scripture is saying here. And then it says this, verse 42 again, especially in this your day. There are times that are more significant than any other time. The uh, verse 44, he says, because you did not know the time of your visitation, the time that I actually wanted to do something special. Wouldn't it be terrible if you graduated from high school and you, and you never realized that this is a very important transition for your life? Every great leader in history, you can mark it down, knows two things. The significance of the moment and the timing of it. The convergence of those two things. Whether it's a male or a female, young person or older person, they understood that there's something significant about their generation, about the time in which they lived, and the convergence of those things, the significance, the timing of it. How many times do we maybe have elections or something like that? We think this is a very significant time. This is really important that we have this and this happen. It's, it's very important at this particular time. Pastor Steve's talking about prayer. There are times when it's really significant. We, we should always, but there are times when it's really significant to have a prayer life. To be able to hear what God's saying. Jesus is saying here, I'm weeping because you seem to be unaware of the significance of the moment. Do you realize the moment? It doesn't even have to be that a tragedy is about to happen, but you could miss an opportunity. A, a door of opportunity is, is open here, and you know doors don't stay open forever. Some people think, you know, everything will just keep on going and going and it'll always be there. No, it won't. And Jesus is weeping about people who seem to be missing their opportunity. And he says this. It comes out in verse 42. If you had known, even you, especially in this day, the things that make for your peace... Now, why doesn't he say the things that make for you having a great life here in Jerusalem? Why, why doesn't he say the things that make for you getting ahead financially? Or why doesn't he say the things that will give you many more friends? But he says this, because you, you don't know, you don't seem to realize that at this moment, there are things that will relate to peace. Why does he say peace? I'll tell you. It's because the name Jerusalem means the city or the foundation of peace. In other words, you seem to be unaware that this city that's named the city of peace needs peace. You're unaware of this significance of this, that I want to give you peace. You can be the city for all the nations of the world. But this moment, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, and it's going. They seem to be unaware of what's around the corner. They seem to be unaware of what's ahead. If you had known this, you would have prepared for it. You'd be aware of it. You'd have embraced me. I, I would have come to Jerusalem, and if you, you really responded to me properly, you would have received me. It would have related to your peace, Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Those of you who are Middle Eastern background, shalom, shalem, salem, salam. The things that relate to your peace. What does peace mean? Your wholeness. It speaks of nothing missing, nothing broken. Your, your, your city, 
Your city could, could have so much happening in it. Your life, your life, your personal life could, could be full. It could have fullness. You say, well, it's not bad. No, we're not talking about not bad. We're talking about fullness. The things that God has for us for fullness. He said, if you only knew the things that relate to peace. When the scripture says in the, the Psalms, pray for the peace of Jerusalem, let me rephrase that. Let me paraphrase it. Because some people will say, oh, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Lord, I pray that you'll protect them from rockets and bombs and all of that going uh, off. No. no. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Pray that it would prosper in every way and live up to its name. It's called Jerusalem. And if Jerusalem doesn't have a fullness, if Jerusalem doesn't have the blessing in every aspect of life, then it's not going to live up to his name. So it's, well, what about your name? And I'm not referring to just, you know, my name is Sam or Samuel. Although, you know, I believe in that. I believe that names speak of things. But what about your name? What about who you are, the real DNA? Can you see things up ahead? Can, can you spot things that are around the corner for your life? Will you be caught where God says to you, if only you had known. Last year, if only you had known. It was just around the corner for you. But instead, you went around the corner and you missed the opportunity. You missed it. And Jesus weeps over these things. You wonder, what does Jesus weeps over? Uh, uh, weep over? He weeps over those times when we as individuals, we as families, when we as churches, when we as cities have a certain call upon our lives. And it's, it, it's something that God says, this is why I created you. you. You don't have to force the situation. This is your DNA, Jerusalem. Your DNA is blessing. Anybody goes to Jerusalem, they'll be blessed. They'll have shalom, salam. The foundation of fullness of blessing is there. But you didn't seem to realize it. Here I am. And if you were to read the story in Luke chapter 19, you'd see it's called the triumphal entry. Children are crying out. People are saying, Hosanna. They're, they're throwing down palm leaves. But then there are so many people. No, no, no. I'm not going to do anything for this guy. No, no. You can come into Jerusalem. You're riding on a donkey. Go into Jerusalem. Who cares? And Jesus begins to bawl. He cries out loud because somebody was supposed to be up here and instead they were hitting the lowest level and the lowest common denominator. They, they, they were just, you know, average. Some people say, well, I just want to be average. I want to tell you a story. Every time in my Christian life, it's about every 10 years. I will experience encounters with God that are very dramatic. And in church life, I've, my life affects your life. And I've, I've, I started tracking it a number of years ago. It might be exactly 10 years. It might not be. But I, I've watched it. And I've even had people tell me, just relax. Just, you know, just relax. You don't have to keep pushing like this. Just slow down. And I say, well, you know, I, I, I don't want to have a, a kind of a mini seizure. And I, I, I want to be relaxed. I, I don't want to make people nervous. But it, it's, it's just slow down. You know, you, you, so many good things have happened. You just sit on it and just kind of rest on your laurels, right? Just, just do that. And yet there are times when God will speak. And he speaks to my heart and I'll realize... It's this Luke chapter 19, verses 41 to 48. It's, Doug, do you know what's up ahead? Do you know what's around the corner? When we moved into this church building from the family center, which is just joined to us on the west side, 
We were in this facility for four days. Might have only had one service. And Pastor Craig came to me. He uh, leads us in special events and evangelism. And he said, Pastor Doug, there's something that, it happened once in the United States. And this guy wants to come to Canada. And it, it's evangelism, and he's never done it in Canada. He's heard about the embassy, and he, he wants to do it here. Oh, oh, I said, I'm excited. Tell me. Well, his name's Ted DiBiase. He's the million-dollar man. I said, Craig, he's a wrestler. And I'm like, you know, which part of this is to figure out? I said, how do you mean? Oh, he, he's a Christian. He wants to reach people for the lost. And immediately, my life is going before me. And I'm thinking, new carpet. Nice seats. You could get some people in this building who aren't clean. And they're not dressed up for Sunday. I'm like, did we build it? And then I thought, who did we build it for? And so I said, uh, you know, now I have conflict. And I'm standing in front of Pastor Craig. I said, oh, Pastor Craig, we just built it. But, you know, I, I think if we, if we were to do that, I'm like, you know, I'll be going down the road in two weeks. They'll say goodbye to me. I said, listen, let me go home and pray about it. And I thought, I'll go home and pray about it. And God, you know, God thinks like I do. I think like he does. And he'll say no. So I went home and God said yes. <laughs> oh, dear Lord. Or, oh, God, our help in ages past. You know, and uh, I said, Pastor Craig, I'll be honest with you, I, I felt real clear. God said yes, but I'll tell you, I don't know how, but we're going to have to, this is code language, I said, we'll have to pastor it. That means we'll have to have shields when the tomatoes are thrown at us to not get hit too many times. And uh, so, you know... You have to understand, my heart's just pounding because, well, where would you put this ring? Like, that actually wrestle on stage. And I know that some people come in and, and they think this is the best spot and, you know, the farther out you get, the, the cheap seats are back there and the people are barely saved at the back, which isn't true. But people can think that way. And I thought, oh, Lord. And then, you know, when I begin to announce it, people kind of look at me and they, it's like this, you know. They think that I just fell off the turnip truck. And, and they're looking at me and I, they're, you can see the question mark, it's like this, it's like somebody took a felt marker and, and put it like this, you know, question mark. And they're, they're, they're not saying it, but it's right there and it's, don't you realize, wrestlers, the whole thing's a scam? Like, like, who are you? Do, you know, did, did you just get taken? It, don't you see through this thing and you're going to have it in our church? And I'm thinking, I know, I know. But there's something about this that I can't get away from. So we have it. And I thought 50 people will give their lives to Jesus, so we have 50 Bibles, maybe Maybe 55, you know, I might not be exact about it, but 50, 55, 60 little, you know, now that you're a Christian, booklets, little Bibles we're going to give out to them. And I thought, you know, that, that'd be great if we could get some people serving Jesus. And so, uh, you know, uh, there are people who are interested in what's happening here at the embassy when we have this. So the Toronto Star has us on, it was the front page of, of Section B, and a full, a full color picture. And we have uh, the television uh, different uh, uh, stations that are coming to us and they want to come inside here and, and take, take uh, footage of the whole thing that's, that's happening. And, and you know, I, I'm kind of in the back of my mind, scared out of my mind, but also thinking, this is pretty good that people out there are interested what we're doing in here. And I thought, this, this, this is good. Uh, but I was well aware that, you know, not everybody in the, the church might feel that way. So, you know, we, we pastor it. And that night, I'm about an hour, a little bit more earlier, coming in than I normally come in. And a thousand people are outside 
wound around the building waiting for the doors to open. 2,400 was the last count that I saw in here. And I, I, I look and I see a kid wanting to change his seats. He's around 14 years old. So he gets up in the middle and he steps across the wood. And I thought, that's Christian wood. You're walking across Christian wood. You know, you're, you're wrecking our church. I'm thinking this is unreal. None of this is exagger uh, exaggerated because, of course, there were people here. So, you know, we, we have the wrestling. And I see adults. We have security people. We, we took the muscle guys of our church. We gave them security shirts. And we've got adults. You know, there's always a bad guy and a good guy. Well, well the security has to watch where the bad guys. Because these guys are, are wanting to get at the bad guy. And they're yelling. You know, I thought, somebody's dad has just lost it. And they're, they're yelling like that. And, and here's the climax. There's this guy called Hawk. And Hawk gets hit, hit on the head with one of our, our metal chairs. So he's bleeding. And he bleeds on our carpet here right where I preach. I'm serious. He's bleeding on, I think, now what do we do? We've got a wrestler's blood in our carpet. They take him down to the hospital right away. Take a staple gun to him and put staples to close up the gash in his head. And they ask him, what happened? Oh, I was at the embassy church and I got hit by a metal chair. It's the truth. Serious. Serious. So Ted DiBiase, the million dollar man, gets up here. And he says, listen, I gave my life to Jesus and uh, I'm asking you to give your life to Jesus. 532 people got up and came to the front to pray a prayer. It's, it's not that good, though. That part is good. There's another part that's not as good. We had a big cake. I thought it was big enough. You know, it would feed 60, 60 people. It's we take them in there, give them a piece of cake, and say, happy birthday. It's your, your first spiritual birthday. 532, you'll need a crumb. No, nothing to write names down on. I was ready for 55 people, not 532. If I had only known what was around the corner. If I had only known. Honestly, I, I, somebody else can feel differently, but I, I could cry over that still. There are a couple of times in my life where I thought, oh dear God, why couldn't I hear properly? Why did I miss that? Isn't that what church is all about? Isn't that what it's all about, is, is, is doing that? So the way that it's planned is, two days later, I'm to fly over to Europe to preach over there, which I thought was a great idea after that whole thing. And out I go two days later. I preach 13, days, uh, 13 times in 11 days. I, I am beat. And there's one night that we had free. A pastor takes me to his house. I got my feet up. And he says, listen, we got this thing called God TV. He says, you got to see it. It's got Christian stuff on it. I said, oh, sweet. You know, I'd like to see some God TV. He turns on with the remote control. To this day, I, I, I can see it. My feet are up. And in three seconds on God TV, I look. And it's Ted DiBiase. I'm telling you. And he says, oh yeah, this, this wrestling thing, it, it, it's incredible. God put it in our hearts and we're going to different cities in the world. In fact, the last place I was at was in Oshawa, Ontario, Canada. And I'm going, shut up. Shut up. Pinch me now. And he said, yeah, in fact, I'll show you some footage of it. And they begin to show, you know, all these hundreds of people coming down the aisles. I said, that's us. That's us. And I hear a voice of the Lord. Not an impression. I hear voice of the Lord. 
See what happens, Doug, when you're obedient to me. Eh? You have to know, in fact, that's why if, if, you know, if you're here for any period of time, it doesn't matter who's preaching, we ask for people to get saved. And people get saved here. And I, I don't compare, you know, other people can have different ministries, but I know a lot of people get saved here. In some places, it's not easy. Some places, they'll wait a year or two before some get saved. I look back on it and I think, what happened? I'll tell you what happened. This, this is what I believe. Well, one is, if you lift up Jesus, he'll get people saved. But the other is, there'll be times when he'll test your heart. Do you love your carpet more than people? Do you love the building more than people? I needed time to sort that one out. You know, maybe once we've had it for 50 years and ruined the carpet and we need new seats anyway, but this kid, he's, he's going across the tops of the, the, the seats. And the question was, do you really love the lost? You know, when you sort some of those things out and God crystallizes in your heart and life your convictions of what you really believe, it begins to happen in a way that never happened before. And it becomes your DNA. That's what Jesus was trying to say to Jerusalem. It's a test. It's a time of conviction. What will you do with me? Do you know what's around the corner? Do you know what's ahead? Because you are in a place where if you don't know the time, you don't know the significance of the moment, you can miss the visitation of what God wants to do. God wants to do things in embassy. He wants to do things in our city. I think of our city's name, the place of crossing over. So many people will experience a transition into something better while they're in Oshawa. I think of embassy, of all that it is. It's a place where people are transformed. And our city and our region is transformed. That's just what it is. It's what it is. It's what's around the corner. You'll see more of it. And, and the thing is, when you get into God's stream, you'll discover that God's already blessed it. You don't have to sit at home some night or get up early in the morning and think, well, you know, what will I do, what will I do? It's what's the plan for your life? My name, uh, Douglas, means a ditch or a black hole. So there's not much to live up to there. I went into a uh, Christian bookstore and they gave a positive twist on it. They called it a seeker of light. I thought, now these guys are slick. These guys are good. Isaiah 60, in the midst of a world that's in darkness, I'll come with light. God wants to use you and I, I just am going to pull it together now and we're going to pray. So let's stand together, please. There are things that God has for your life. And you were born for this purpose. And if, if you get going off in another direction, you'll miss what God has. At the time, it can be the most uncomfortable thing possible. Oh, this wrestling thing? I, I, I just thought, oh dear Lord, which side of, of my chest is, is my heart on? You know? And, and I, I thought, how do you even pastor telling people that you've got all these wrestlers coming. I thought, how do you pastor that? Lord, why would you do that to a nice guy like me? You know? If I had known around the corner and I was ill-prepared that over 500 people would come walking out, I wonder what it is that God says next. I don't know, so it's not a setup for anything. But I wonder what it is for a people who say, we want to be normal. We want to be Christian and be different because we've given our lives to Jesus Christ. But we want to connect with people who don't know the Lord. Buildings could not contain what God wants to do. And so, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus 
for people this morning, individuals, couples, families, church, city, region. I pray in the name of Jesus. Canada, what was in the heart of God, the DNA, when, when John A. McDonald over in Charlottetown, PEI, what happened there? If, if, if John A. McDonald said, I, I'm going to go somewhere else, I'm not going to go to Charlottetown at this time, we wouldn't have had this merging of French and English for Canada. In the name of Jesus, I just speak the blessing. I speak Holy Spirit, touch people. We take authority over obstacles, conflict, in the name of Jesus, that would release us to your destiny that you have for our lives. We thank you, Lord. We bless, oh, the day that we were born, you were rejoicing. Angels became our angels to care for us. You began to watch over us when, when those baby pictures were taken. How much more now do you have a plan and a purpose for our lives? We bless it. We bless it in the name of Jesus. We pray that that DNA would be so real, just like Jerusalem, that they would realize that they were to be a city of peace, a foundation of peace. A place that would be the favor of the whole earth. People would say Jerusalem, they'd say it's the best place in the whole world. Let it be so for us. Let it be so for us. We bless people this morning. I bless you. I bless you. I bless what God's doing in your life. That you wouldn't miss it. Let us know, Lord. Let us know what you're doing. That we wouldn't be Christians who, who are, are missing it. Just Christians in name, but not knowing what's around the corner not knowing what's up ahead. Open our eyes that it wouldn't be hidden from us. Open our eyes in Jesus' name. I pray for people who don't know you this morning. If it's, if it's you, I'm not going to ask you to come forward this morning, but you say, I, I need the Lord. I need Jesus in my life. Just hold your hand up higher, both of them. Just put them up in the air real high. Up in the balcony, I see your hand over there. You can put it down. The main floor, I can see your hand over here. I see a hand over here as well. You can put it down. Up in the balcony over there, I see your hand over there. Just hold it up high. Hold it up high. In, in, in the back, I see your hand over there. Thank you. And, middle section here. I see your hand over there. I see a hand over there. Two hands over there. Thank you. Over here in Jesus' name. Father, we want salvation to visit these people. Let's pray this prayer. All of us will pray it, but those of you who are raising your hands, let's pray the prayer. Lord Jesus, I've sinned against you. I know the penalty is death. I've experienced brokenness in my life. I'm willing to turn from myself and turn to you. I put my trust in you alone, Jesus. Wash all of my past sins away by your precious blood. I'm sorry. I'm sorry enough to stop. Give me the power to live the Christian life from this day forward my life is yours by the grace of God I'm going to serve you and live for you I love you Lord in Jesus name Amen would you welcome them into the family of God There are people who have those booklets. And I'm going to ask that you would make yourself available, uh, our prayer ministry team. If, if you could be available at some of the outlets there for people who need to go now. And so that we can give it to you, you can take it with you. We want to help you to continue to grow. It's a walk. It's called discipling. And we'll give that to you and, and we'll stay in touch with you. And you can fill out that little card. You can keep the Bible and all of that. We have, it, it's by law that we need to do this, and we, we treat it as celebration. We have an annual business meeting. It's, we'll, we'll convene in about three minutes, actually two minutes, and just stay in the main floor. And it uh, doesn't matter whether you're a member or not, you're welcome to stay, and you can just hear uh, about who we are and what we do. 
members especially we need a quorum so that we can convene so just meet here for others who would like to uh, talk you can go to, uh, our coffee shop is closed today for this reason but you can be dismissed don't forget about your kids if you're leaving now take your kids with you after our business meeting we'll uh, release you to pick up your kids so god bless you we're dismissed thank you so much